For 3,000 years, Egypt was a titan of the Mediterranean region. Ruled by a king or queen using the title of pharaoh, they enjoyed almost limitless power and wealth. But by the time Julius Caesar dominated the Roman Republic as dictator, Egypt was a shadow of its former glory. As Rome stretched its influence over the country, civil war and a vicious power grab erupted. Aided by the pharaoh Cleopatra, one rival to the Roman throne conspired to claim it all for himself, but in failing, inadvertently brought an end to Egyptian independence and the end of the pharaohs forever. Yeah. <laughs> Since around 3150 BC, when Upper and Lower Egypt were unified, the Egyptian monarch ruled as a living god amongst men. They stood as sole, unquestioned rulers, owning the land, collecting taxes, enacting laws, administering the country's internal and external affairs, and heading the Egyptian army at a time of war. The pharaoh was seen as the intermediary between the gods and the people. Early pharaohs were considered gods themselves, but later acted in a more subsidiary role, maintaining the cosmic order of the deities with religious ceremonies, new temples, expansive burial grounds like the pyramids, and wars to fight off enemies who challenged their beliefs. While we use the term pharaoh to define the period from Egypt's unification until its power faded in the first century BC, throughout history, many simply called themselves king or queen. A total of 31 family dynasties ruled Egypt over 32 centuries in what is one of the longest lasting and best preserved of history's ancient kingdoms. During that period, its star has rose and fell, as conquerors ranging from the Persian Empire to the Macedonians under Alexander the Great conquered their land and stripped the pharaoh of absolute rule, limiting them to a subservient position. Few pharaohs in history are more memorable and famous than Cleopatra VII Philopator. Her extensive fame led to her name being simplified simply to Cleopatra. But her reign was far more complicated. She ruled for 12 years while Egypt sat semi-autonomous under Roman rule, famous for her beauty, various love affairs, and power in international politics dominated by men. As the Roman Republic expanded under Julius Caesar, Cleopatra enjoyed a private affair with him to maintain her power as Egypt's joint ruler with her brother producing a son known colloquially as Caesarion. After Caesar was assassinated in 44 BC, Rome erupted into a mad scramble for power, and an uneasy alliance of three was formed. Caesar's designated heir and adopted son, Octavian, shared dictatorial power with two other men to fight off assassins, Marcus Lepidus and Mark Antony. By 42 BC, their enemies were defeated and the Republic was split between the three, with Octavian governing Rome itself, while Antony was placed in the eastern provinces, including the region of Egypt, governing the area with Pharaoh Cleopatra, his subordinate. But like Caesar before him, the following year Antony began an affair with Cleopatra. With such a powerful ally as the Pharaoh and her army by his side, both hoped to take absolute power of Rome for themselves. Tensions were high between the three co-rulers of the Republic, and each had designs to rule independently. In 36 BC, a dispute between Octavian and Lepidus resulted in the latter being stripped of his power and sent into exile. Suddenly, three became two. But both Octavian and Mark Antony hoped that wouldn't last for long. Antony had been acting independently and against the wishes of Octavian and the Rome Senate for years. But, once stationed in Egypt, this only increased. He enraged Octavian by divorcing his sister, a marriage initially arranged as a way to keep the peace between the two, and married Cleopatra, bearing one son from the relationship. Octavian ramped up propaganda against Antony in Rome. Eventually, he was able to gain the Senate's approval for war by unearthing and publishing Antony's plans to usurp him and take sole control. Antony was declared a traitor to the Republic, and war was declared on Cleopatra's Egypt. Things came to a head at Actium, Greece, on the 2nd of September, 31 BC. 
Antony was stationed there with a fleet of 500 ships and 70,000 troops, compared to Octavian's 400 ships and 80,000 troops. Octavian tracked him down and struck first, cutting his rival off at land and sea and forming a blockade to keep him ringed in. The success of this was significant, as many of Antony's forces fled or deserted before the battle even began. In his attempts to break through, Antony's fleet was outmatched and was only saved by the arrival of Cleopatra, who waited nearby with her own fleet. Both got out safely, but Antony's troops had been abandoned in Actium, and much of his fleet had been destroyed. Fleeing to the Egyptian capital Alexandria, Antony and Cleopatra set up their defense, ready to make a final stand. The Battle of Alexandria was fought in multiple parts almost a year after Octavian's success at Actium. First laying siege to the city in July 30 BC, Octavian probed the city's defenses but struggled to make a breakthrough, as Antony's remaining forces proved loyal, experienced and well-trained. He repelled initial attacks, losing many of his already depleted forces to desertion and casualty in the process, causing Octavian to launch an all-out attack on the 30th of July. Holding out in Alexandria's Hippodrome, a second assault, likely on the 1st of August, finally saw Antony's defense fall and Octavian take the city. All important members of the Ptolemaic dynasty were captured alive, including the jointly ruling pharaohs of Cleopatra and her son Caesarion, and Mark Antony, though few lived for long. Imprisoned in the city, Antony and Cleopatra likely hoped for a similar fate to Marcus Lepidus, the mercy of exile and retirement abroad, but they would not be so fortunate. Tradition says that Mark Antony heard Cleopatra was dead and stabbed himself with a sword on the day the city fell. Upon hearing she was actually still alive, he was rushed to her side and died in her arms. Cleopatra was given permission to arrange his burial, and believing she would soon be paraded around Rome as a trophy of war by Octavian, she poisoned herself around the 10th or 12th of August. The title of Pharaoh, then, passed on solely to her son Caesarion, who was already out of Alexandria and fleeing. Not wanting to risk the son of Julius Caesar staying alive and someday becoming a rival for his throne, Octavian had the boy tracked down, captured, and killed sometime around late August. Other lesser members of the family were similarly executed, exiled, or incorporated into Roman families. And with that, in a single month, 3,000 years of the pharaohs came to an end. Following the capture of Alexandria, Egypt was officially annexed into the Roman Republic. Previously, it had been a client kingdom, ruling with depleted powers, but following this crushing defeat, it formally became a Roman province ruled by an appointed governor. No further rivals stood in Octavian's path, and he became undisputed sole ruler of the Republic. To consolidate this, he declared Rome an empire and took the titles of Augustus and Princeps, in 27 BC, meaning the illustrious one and primary senator, respectively. Any further doubts for who ruled Rome was gone, and Octavian became the first emperor of Rome, known to history under the name Augustus. He died in 14 AD, but the empire carried on after him for centuries. When it fell in the west in 476 AD, the remaining empire in the east, centered around Constantinople, continued controlling Egypt until 641, when it was conquered by the Islamic Rashidun Caliphate, ending 700 years of Roman rule. After that, various empires and regional powers rose and fell, controlling Egypt until the 20th century when they finally won their independence. But by then, the world was a different place. Pharaohs were a distant memory, and the tradition was not resumed. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more. And if you enjoyed this video, share it with friends and family. So a day in the life can be as long lasting as the pharaohs of old.